Disclaimer. This podcast showcases business partners and friends that engage in lively conversations about books over many drinks. Content may not be suitable for viewers under 21. I'm going to put this on I ice. I have water. We can you? Yes. No. Please. We can't have water. Slosh. We don't do water. Have to be slosh. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. There's your phone. All right. Hey, y'all. Welcome to another episode of Books and Booze. And <laughs> she's like, what? Well, oh, I was like, if you put a cue to me, I mean, it's already actually she's like, it's all right. Okay, all right, you're okay, good. Hey, y'all. Oh, y'all are in there. I always, okay, this is Jen. Third take. <laughs> Second verse, same as the first. A little bit louder and a little bit worse. Okay. <laughs> hey, y'all. Hi, guys. Welcome to another episode of Hi, I'm Lonnie. I'm Kristen, and this is my very good friend, Vinny. Can you tell them about yourself? Sure. Um, so my name is Viviana Sonano. I've actually known Kristen and Kevin for a very long time. Very dear friends of mine. I've had the pleasure of meeting Leilani uh, not that long ago, so I'm super excited and grateful to be she here. She's on it so, today. Yes. Stop it, but go on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, so what I do is I, you know, I'm very passionate about educating my community on how to grow, transfer, and preserve their wealth. So I feel very, very lucky to be with here with you ladies here today and uh, speaking to your community and hopefully adding some value and making some great commentary. I wish that poured out is such a... It's a great book. It, right? It's such an impactful book on... on anybody's life really it's on every single yeah you want to open a business yeah. if you want to grow your wealth if you just want to improve your life it's on every top list to read yep yeah, right. really. yeah. so yep. yeah i know this time we kind of worked ourselves backwards right so our tagline obviously y'all we started this podcast to take you on a journey of literature and libations mm-hmm. here Ooh, to okay. kind of like i mean <laughs> now here you have three business women and I don't know if you can tell, we might be more than one of these in. <laughs> we pre-gamed. We pre-gamed a little. Don't worry. Wait. Just kidding. Well, that's the that is what you do can do it. And that's the second. More than we get preview. Yeah, but look, guys. Everybody get ready because what Vivi just demonstrated is what we will be doing. Yeah. Well, I don't see it. Look, look. Okay. Look, look. <laughs> you can already see it. I don't know. Okay, y'all. I am a... So, typically, you all know, you watch this. What we'll do is we introduce... The spirit. Yeah. So what are we drinking today, Kristen? Well, <laughs> well not, that, was just, that was my like, cut. What are we drinking today, Kristen? <laughs> um, we are trying. Uh, we're, so this whole month of June, we've been kind of slowing down and giving you one book to read possibly over your week family vacation that you go somewhere or stay home. But whatever. It's books you can digest typically within a week. And we are featuring Florida wines for the month of June. Yes. So we are now at the Lake Ridge Wine. Well, we're not at there. We will be. We can be. We can be. Lake Ridge Winery in Claremont, Florida, which started in 1989 with Gary Cox, and it's still run by his family. Yeah. Oh. And it's, I think we talked about this um, before with the St. Augustine Distillery, yes. kind of a satellite partnership. Yeah. So, uh, so. San Sebastian was the wine we featured previously. Um, they are the satellite winery. Lake Ridge is the main actual winery. It yep. is the actual main winery. And they actually, they're located mm-hmm. in Claremont, Florida. You can go to their winery. You can do tours. They offer free tours and tastings. And they'll walk you through the facility. And you'll get to see their beautiful vineyard. It's absolutely gorgeous. gorgeous. I've seen yeah. pictures. We definitely need to go and do an episode there. Wait, wait. They have never even been to this. I've, yeah. never, I've been to Lake Ridge. I've been to Lake Ridge at least. Okay. <laughs> I'm <laughs> okay. I'm okay. okay. Um, and it is, it's beautiful. It's okay. A, it's a beautiful occasion. The, the vineyards are gorgeous. They always have like events here and there. They do. Every weekend they do yeah. uh, the concerts and you can, it's very pretty because they have these huge oak trees that are lining um, an area where they, you're able to do concerts. So you can get a picnic. 
um, like a basket and a blanket and sits out it out and then you can buy a bottle of wine over there or you yeah, eat. yeah or the net <laughs> eat. and you just sit there and enjoy <laughs> the um the the concert the free concert that's called yeah. on and they have food there they're, right? yeah they have like yeah they have all right and they do yeah. have you ever called and they have like food carts and things like that yeah yeah, yeah. so it's like a fun you know <gasps> real like, day fun. yeah day so that what I call it night right yes okay. yeah 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 and we have so many more books to do and they have have so many more wines i think we should like let's do it we could just get a picnic basket blanket sit on there we'll and, go and yeah the okay. get the phone get the yes here we go yeah so we are about to try there so all you taught me this before florida and georgia the grape that is grown yes. naturally is so muscadine it's a muscadine. Uh, uh, their wines are primarily and there's some that are um sorry guys i forgot to take this <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's too late. No, it's okay. You can keep this on camera. It's all right. But <laughs> anyways, um, so uh, Lake Ridge actually uses muscadine grapes. They are indigenous to Florida and the Georgia region. Oh, interesting. And it's funny because our our weather over here is a little bit harsher. So sure. the muscadine. Oh, you mean this hundred and seventy degree weather right now? Yeah, as I wear a sweater. <laughs> no, <laughs> not a no. Uh, the muscadine grape has a very hard outer shell, or what we like to call the concha. Oh, oh, I brought up the Spanish. <laughs> 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 they, uh, the, the, but the meat inside of the grape is super super sweet. And it, it is definitely, you can definitely taste it within this wine. And I believe, for me, I've, I've tasted a lot of wine. I have yet to wow. taste another muscadine grape wine. Okay. Mm. So, hey, hit us up. If you're making muscadine grape wine, I'm here. I'm your girl. I will taste test and give you the real. We can we awesome have some taste tests. We, <laughs> we can be the second. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you know, we got this. We got this. Yeah, we got you. <laughs> yeah, we got you. <laughs> I'm the best guide. Yes. Yes. So, we are happy. So, let's have this a try, friends. Are oh, ready? Cheers. cheers. Grab a good bottle. Get, get some very moose and get a good buddy to share it with. Oh, I love that. Cheers, y'all. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Mm-hmm. No. Oh. Mm-hmm. So this is reminiscent to me of the Vintner's White that we got from St. Augustine. Yeah. So I wonder because of the grape, probably. It's the grape. Mm-hmm. It's the grape. So mm-hmm. I do feel this is a little more crisp. I don't know if they do something different. Maybe it's in my head. I don't know. So, you know, Kat, you, you, uh, Welch grape juice. You guys ever had? Oh, yes. yeah. Right. So, yeah. So, I had a union growing up. Oh, so no. I took a <laughs> <laughs> I was so oh, oh, boy. <laughs> um, Welch grape juice is like, it feels like the Welch grape juice up in there, but it's like so much more pungent. You know, like, no, it's, like it's, it's not the word. It's, it's, for, but... it's, it's got a really interesting finish. And I'm, you know, I, I've been known to drink. My glass of wine or two. No, it's always yeah, girl. Can you believe? It? Oh, uh, okay. first communion. That was my first experience. Yeah, that's just a story for another day. But yeah. like, those priests don't know what they did. No, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll make it quick. I was the very first one in line, and the priest gave me the glass, and I thought I was supposed to chug it. And so they had to take it away from me. And that is when the novel was born. <laughs> I don't know, poor spirits and wine. But anyway, with all with all honesty, I mean, it's got. Uh, I've, I've drank a couple of glasses of wine in my life, right? But it, it's always difficult for me to describe kind of like what you, what you taste, right? So, and I feel like you guys, you ladies do a very good job of kind of placing those notes, right? I, I do have to say it's got a very interesting finish. And it's interesting in a way that I, I can, can almost place it. Maybe some cantaloupe. Uh, oh, yeah, like, yeah, it's a light, 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 light melon. melon. Yeah, is it wine cantaloupe or was it wine melon? There's like white melon. Okay, so cantaloupe is its own. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. So cantaloupe is the orange one, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Nah, tears. <laughs> nah. That's pretty <laughs> old. No, it doesn't have it. Do you know, ladies, see that? Yeah. Like, there's a, that kind of like the notes of your belly. So yes. the melon, you know, the melon has like that little. It's not tart, but it's almost. I, I dare say cantaloupe in itself has like a little bit of like a fermented mm-hmm. kind of yeah uh, type of flavor to it and that carries forward over here so i know what you're saying yeah there is a little bit of a tang mm-hmm. but it's not acidy no no yeah. not at all no yeah like tanniny yeah right? it's always and then and, and, and that is the muscadine so okay. if you go and you take that muscadine grape and I, I i have no other way to say it is that 
they really found a way of bottling what a muscadine grape tastes mm. like. So if I were to go and pick a grape ripe off the vine, chew it, eat a Lake Ridge this okay. is what it tastes like. All right. Yes. And Lake Ridge. And Lake Ridge. Oh, there we go. I, I, there we go. So you see it. You see it. Tongue your <laughs> Top yourself up. Oh, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Do oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll do it. Why you not? I don't get it. It was been good. Put a glass of water. Come on. So I had actually, okay. <laughs> so I had brought to the, another thing along. Oh, no, man, my ice cubes do. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Are you okay? Oh, oh, I love the glass. Oh, never mind. What? I'm trying to be bougie, okay? Now, okay. <laughs> that was like bougie, not bitchy. <laughs> okay, there we go. Think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Can I try that? Because I yes. do love ice cubes. Do you want one too? No. We're good. I think I just... that. No, we okay. have it right now. I know. I mean, like, one of my ears. Like, well, I know the wine people in the world are like, what did she do? She just put ice inside of wine. <laughs> Guys, listen. If you try this wine, you'll see that. But you have to have any time. No, I'll never go out here in camera. Don't play the videos. Why don't you flip it? We don't force it. Uh, and don't force it. Don't force it. Don't force it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I don't want it to be. There you go. Yeah. Here I come. I'm sure it's something you want it to taste like with the ice. So I might have their ice and mine, but. Oh, you want to taste? Oh, you can taste mine. Absolutely. But you got to give it to me. You got to just put it in there. Never mind. So. Go ahead and I have my cheers. The cheer night. Yeah, it's full. Share with us. So grab a good book. I have uh-huh. great booze. I grab amazing buddy to share on. So this is how we do. You're at the baby eyes. Yeah, let me let me that it. So you really have to look at a, a video we put on of how the tagline came about. Yeah. No, you're safe. It was here and we were only an honor to to the tenth power drinks in. Ah, this is some square. Or, 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 yeah, I'm the dirty roof. Yeah, and that's where the tag. Yeah, came. we were sitting out there. Yeah, oh, I was over there. All right, so a lot of great things about this is such a great. Yep, wine. It is really good. Winery. Wine. I'm excited to go see them. Go ahead. Yep. Nope. Just kidding. I thought we were going into the books. Well, that's what I was going to say. Oh, they're nothing. Run the cart on the wine. Lake yes. Ridge. Great job. Okay. Yep. Now we'll look. get twenty minutes. Yes, thirty minutes. Tell us, you actually were the first who read this book, and I heard about it, one from the list to read, but you had read it first. So, yes. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, is, it, I, I find that, especially if you're in sales, this is something that's recommended to you, usually by your boss, right, or some higher up that is trying to get you to increase your sales and stuff like that. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is one of them. But I find that anyone who's starting a business, looking to start a business, already in it, and you're, you know, like a year or two in this is a book you kind of default to, um, and it's, we aligned it perfectly with Viviana for the simple fact that her tagline is for her to help you grow, preserve, and transfer your wealth. And that's exactly kind of what this book is all about, mm-hmm. you know, growing your wealth, right? Because that's the, we've talked about this in previous books. You grow your wealth, but you need to learn how to preserve it right yeah. because if you grow your wealth and you don't know how to preserve it it's gonna come in and it's gonna go right back out right so you go ahead and you preserve it but anything like everything circulation balance all of that comes into play right so you can preserve it but now how do you figure out how to transfer it and transfer it and it's not just from one bank account to another mm-hmm. you have to think about generationally most of us here are working for our legacy yep so transfer your wealth to the next legacy, whether that's to your friends and family, community, you want to work that, that's a transference. Yeah. Um, in this book, it goes through a lot of things over yeah. here. Robert Kiyosaki is an excellent mentor. He actually has a podcast, which he talks uh, in depth about multiple subjects that are mentioned in the book. Yes. Um, but we don't have... Three weeks to go over this book. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in about thirty minutes. Yeah, um, <laughs> but it is a—it's a wealth of knowledge. It really is. It is. And to give you kind of his backstory, where this came from, growing up, I think Hawaii, if I remember, my mm-hmm. yeah, is Hawaii. Exactly. Yeah. Um, his dad was from the educated sector. His dad really believed in higher education. Yeah. His dad believed, probably like a lot of you and I have been raised, is 
you find a good job, you work really hard, you, you know, commit your life to it. I mean, that's kind of how a lot of us are raised, right? And, you know, fortunately, that's not really the way well, in which well. you will, yes, in which you build wealth, in which you actually break out of the rat race, right? Hamster the wheel. wheel. Yeah, they call it. Oh, perfect. Yeah, the hamster wheel. Yeah, I mean, that's a perfect, that's a perfect way to describe it, right? Because you feel like you're advancing, you feel like you're doing things you feel like you're actually getting ahead you're going to make it out of the the hamster wheel but it never really have that right? the only way is through entrepreneurship or through you know getting creative with other solutions outside of just your nine to five yep right and unfortunately we're raised in a society where that is pretty and that is kind of encouraged and co- kind of what's encouraged and then of course i mean then you have your family right yep. so i don't know i mean i don't know if you ever had any pushback i mean you ladies are both business owners i'm a business owner so it's you know as soon as you announce it to your family your friends and and closest people in your circle they're like what are you doing you're crazy you're earning you know six figures you're doing all these things like you have all this uh benefits and 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 they encourage you to not go down the entrepreneurship route why because they want that's the only thing that they know and they want you to be safe why? Right. Yeah, and they do it out of care, but they really, well, but that's the thing. I actually think the care is this place in here. Yep, and absolutely. I, and that's the part that it, you know, I <laughs> like, and my, like my comb, my my well, no, no, like conspiracy. Like, but okay, yeah, I want to know about the conspiracy. No, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh. Usually, you put the cone on for a conspiracy. Uh, I'm saying this really isn't a conspiracy. It's kind of a trap that a lot of people. It's a mindset. Yeah, story we tell ourselves. It does to the yes. person who's listening to this. That's actually yeah. on the other side. Yeah, it's a conspiracy. That's why uh, I, I see what you mean. You know, oh, wow. so that's the part where I go. It, it is fear-based. The moment you go and dive into the entrepreneurial side of things, because the unsuccessful ratio, right? Mm-hmm. Talking about statistics, 90% of them, right? Let's just say conservatively, 80% fail, right? Okay. And it's fear-based. So they're going to tell you, don't do it. What are you doing? What are you saying? You should stay here, be safe, blah, blah, blah. Right. Because maybe their past experience is that they dived into, they, they failed out, or right. something like close to them failed. Right. And so sure. they're, they're yeah. going to you. But again... Why do you think they're being taught that too? That's where the conspiracy part comes. Yep. No, I totally get what you're saying now. Okay. So this has been Robert's kind of start to life. His dad came from the educated sector. His dad wanted to encourage him to go after education and have a great job where his best friend's dad kind of lived on the other side of town, what was labeled as the poor side of town. Mm. Yet his dad had his own business. They were always able to do what they wanted to do and his dad always said well we'll do that when we have money but they never had the money for that and so he and that's his point that that you're referring to right and so that's you know that i feel like it's important to kind of differentiate right yes because it was his his poor dad is his his biological father and for the longest time in the book he calls him his educated dad Mm -hmm. you know it isn't till later and when you you, you figure what he goes and explains that that's actually his biological father yep and but his best friend's dad who owns his own businesses Mm -hmm. thinks a little different about what to do with money what to do with working different places and Mm -hmm. absorbing what you can Mm -hmm. to better yourself by those different experiences Mm -hmm. um that yeah that's who he considers his rich dad and it's he gets he gets brought up kind of given feedback from both of these influential men in his life yeah which is amazing and it's not a lot of us have that privilege i think a lot of us are brought up either always having go for education Go for the nine to five. Now it was me. Find a good company, work there your whole life. Yes. And that's, that's, if I could touch on that subject, right? Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of, I think it's a TED talk called the squiggly, squiggly career. Oh, I got her squiggly career past. Something I like, but I like, but it's, you know. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh, there's a lot. You know, I, we're taught, hey, pick a career, stick, stick with there, stay mm-hmm. to a company, ideally, yep. work through your whole life, and that's how you become wealthy, right? And then, unfortunately, that's not the case for the most part. I'm not going to say that everybody has that same experience, right? Right? Some people need that. Some people know what theory. to do with their investments, right? Like, exactly. exactly to start off with, invest mm-hmm. wisely. Correct. Okay. okay. So I'm not going to say that this is the experience across the board. However, um, the squiggly career teaches you something similar to what you're referencing, right? Mm-hmm. Which is 
learn different skills in different jobs and yep. different companies. Everything is going to be a, a, a blast, a building block. Building blast. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Um, you're going to learn your soft skills on a sales job or a mm-hmm. food or beverage job or a job where you have to have yeah. that. You have an emotional customer facing yep. relationship you're going to build, your analytical skills on a job where you have to do more accounting, accounting more bookkeeping, more, you know, and so mixing those worlds is important, especially if you want to go into entrepreneurship, because I feel like as an entrepreneur, you always have to be a quote unquote salesperson. Oh, you also have to be a person who keeps track of their books, right? right? So all of these skills that you learn in different careers and different jobs, different companies are all important, Right. Um, and you don't necessarily get those when you're sticking to one job in one place for the rest of your life. And I think we run into that different plug for a different book, but E-Myth, right? So many mm. people. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love that book. Oh, it's amazing because, right, you're, oh, you're so good at this. Like, oh, you're amazing at making jewelry. You should have your own business. And you said, okay. Yeah. Mm. But look at what you had to go through. Could you imagine had you ascertained things from other places so you knew, how, I mean, did actually you've you have worked several oh, places and you were able to draw from that thank goodness mm. but i think that's where i think that's the part where we talked about the entrepreneurial journey mm. i think people hear about the struggle that others have gone through and they feel like they need to learn these things before they go into business for themselves oh, and, no, no. and so the other side of that is i'll tell you right now is get started get started don't worry about all the obstacles because when you're faced with those obstacles you'll learn you'll learn and and typically there's a set of lists so it's usually those lists that you want <laughs> <lists. laughs> there's a checklist of things that you have to hear and david and his list that's, that's kind of place kid oh i'll I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll give you an example <laughs> Um, my my start of of of, of my journey, mm-hmm. um, as I met someone in the farmers market, and she said, "Hey, go ahead, and you should really think about getting on this particular platform." But in order to get into this particular platform, I needed there was a list of things I needed to provide for them. So when you're hit with these obstacles, typically there will be a list of items given to you that says, "If you want to overcome this obstacle, do this, do this, this, this." Right? This. Yeah. And so that's the part where we 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 talk about. You will continue to learn, right? The squiggly line that you're talking about. All right. You will continue to learn. But I think what stops a lot of people is they start thinking about the squiggly line before they actually even hit it. Mm. I see what you mean. So mm. I'm going to tell you, forget about the squiggly line. Don't even worry about it. Just go. Just do yeah. it. Oh, don't worry about getting the experience elsewhere. Yeah. Don't Which worry about it. I see what you, you mean. No, no, that's not really valid for me. Don't worry about the experience. Prime example where you're at right now. So I'm going to tell you, this is all the stuff you need to learn in order to be in the position you're in right now. Would you do it? No. Would you have left your career, gone on to Northwest Wish World, do everything that you say that you do, if everyone told you in order for you to get to where you're at right now, would you have done it? Did you kind of jump in and learn as you go? Man, you, yeah, no, I knew I had to jump in and learn as I go. I mean, I, and the thing is that before I started my practice, I had the opportunity to start this practice three years ago and I did it. And the way that I ended up making the decision to move into the practice is because I, I took a job within the company and I saw everything for the back end. And then eventually I was like, oh, you know what? This is really cool. I can belt and do it all. Right? Correct. Correct. But if I would have started three years ago, or when I would have been, exactly. Now I have three more years to catch up. You know what I mean? And to be to where I was. Because I, I got to see people who started, um, you know, say, for example, three years ago in, in, in my position that I was offered then. And they're thriving right now. They're crushing it. They're doing great. They're making a difference, you know? And so not saying that I'm not, but it's, you know, if I had taken the risk, like you're saying, and I hadn't thought about it that way, and I'm glad that you bring up that point, um, who knows? I mean, who knows? Yeah, yeah. And that's, right. and that's where, you know, we talk about goal setting is a huge thing that I, 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 I address is that the end goal is right there. But if you think of how many moving parts it takes for you to make the steps. So say my end goal is just to touch that wall. Mm-hmm. Do you know how many different muscles I have to move and how many joints well, I have to move? Especially with the tape and the cords <laughs> and the lender <laughs> thing, all that. Just to get to a wall, you might stop yourself from doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, and this is, you know, coming back to the book. So at first, you know, they were kind of, they weren't allowed to go to some sort of event or party when they were kids because only the rich kids got to go. Mm. So they decided they wanted to figure out how to make money. Yeah. So they literally were in their garage trying to print out <laughs> coins. Yeah. And his educated dad was like, what are you doing? This is illegal. And his friend's dad was like, you're kind of almost there. 
and he he offered them a job to work at his grocery store for even though they were kids or some sort of store yeah work for like practically nothing and they were interns in a way yes so eventually they were like you're not paying me enough and they were starting to blame the employer versus their mindset and creativity right and how many people do we hear who are like i need a bigger paycheck so i need to make more I money mean, i'm not I'm, I'm i'm a mom of teenagers you're uh, a teenage, teenager yep. my other one has a bit teenager <laughs> but i got two and you got two so i have to drink more and i think <laughs> i think that the, one of the obstacles that we come across is that you hear when they're in their employment mm-hmm. and they're complaining mm-hmm. about their employment and us as adults now having umpteen years on them are like you don't know that what you're learning is more valuable than what you're being paid. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, a prime example in my company. Um, I just hit the start thing. <laughs> in my company, Good. <laughs> my son has worked for me twice now. Okay. Okay. And one of the decisions that my husband and I made was that he needs to go work for someone else. And that was something that we did at 16 years old. Bye. Go work for someone else because I understood that the lesson learned working for someone else was more valuable Mm -hmm. than anything I could have taught him as as the parent, right? And so that's where you go. And and now I'm hearing the complaints. I don't get enough hours. I don't make enough. Or the the nuances of what it is and working in that company and the obstacles he's coming across and he's complaining about it, right? Or people he doesn't like. But all of that is developing developing more than the fifteen dollars is getting paid an hour, mm. you know. And so that's yeah. the part where you where you just talk about, and he said it too. Yep. These kids were complaining like, about how much, how much they, they were making because they were basing on they couldn't afford to do anything. What with they it. wanted. So then, what the poor dad does is he takes away their pay altogether. Yeah. And says, "Okay, you really want to learn business? I'm taking your pay away. You're going to keep working for free." And they know, like it, it just blew their mind. Yeah. But they agreed to do it. And pretty soon, I think they turned in, they figured, they saw like a comic book salesperson mm-hmm. and they were allowed to keep the comic books as long as they didn't resell the comic books. So they had a creative idea to lease time right. to read the comic book. I'm like, yeah. that's brilliant. It's brilliant. And I think when you're pushed up against the wall and you want to figure yes. it out, the creative juice is absolutely. absolutely. You have you have to figure it out. At that point, you have to figure it out. Your back is against the wall. Like, you, you, this is what you want. What are you going to do to get it? Right. Yeah. Right? Um, and I think that's, you know, that, that's a really valuable lesson when mm-hmm. it comes to entrepreneurship. Whenever you're working for yourself, it's important. It can, there comes a point where you have to get really creative, you yep. know, and, and that's where it can get uncomfortable. But remember that when you're uncomfortable, that's where growth is happening. Oh, I have a friend who goes and says that when you're in your uncomfortable part, that's where the most juiciest parts of you. Oof. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Cheers to that, son. Cheers to that. Oh, yes. 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 I think Chagger. Yeah. <laughs> it hurt. It hurt. Sunny. <laughs> Sunny, I've heard a lot about you. You sound like an amazing person. I just heard about you, but you <laughs> sound like an amazing person. It's- so we've only talked about the wine in chapter one. <laughs> so let's oh, keep rolling glory. through here. All right. Okay, so... In reality, you know, you had said it originally, this book could have been spread out over four weeks. There is so much so meat and content condensed. in this, guys. It's so condensed. But it's also yeah. something you could read through the first time mm. and ascertain, oh, yeah. like, kind of a big picture. Like, he talks about, so one of his chapters, Why Teach Financial Lit- Literacy. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. We we'll talked about this in a previous episode. Yeah. That and then Minding Your Own Business. And I think the two go really well hand in hand, like, when you can't grow wealth, and we got this in Richest Man of Babylon. We read that book. Have you ever read that book? I have not yet, but I've always heard great things about it. Check out our episode. Okay. All right. I <laughs> will. Uh, but it really, like, how can you expect to grow something if you don't understand about it? Right. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Right. And I'm sure you meet a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. <laughs> Which is why your passion is to educate people. Right. Because there's things that people can do, even if they're like, I have nothing in savings. Why? But why? But there's there are ways things they can do. do. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it just takes a little bit of time. Yep. And it, sometimes it just takes an accountability partner. And I think that's one of the things that I enjoy yeah. about, my, about my work the most is kind of start sitting down with somebody and analyzing, okay, what is it that you're doing? 
Where is it that you want to go? What is it that you want to do? Let have your angle. To, yes, absolutely. And, and make a plan backwards. Absolutely. You mm -hmm. got to do a reverse analysis. Yep. You have to understand, okay, what is the psychology behind the things that you're currently doing? So there's, you were saying there's an emotional There is component. a huge emotional component, right? right? And I don't know if you guys have talked about the psychology of money yet, but that is a... We have it. So I want to build on that too. Okay. When you talk about it being an emotional component, it's emotional because of this, when we talk about the sac, it's not sacrificial. I don't know why I keep thinking about that. <laughs> it's not sacrificial. It's a scarcity mindset. Right. For me, scarcity is sacrificial. They keep interchanging and there's a reason for that. But if you, <laughs> I'll keep talking. So if you go back and forth and you start thinking about the scarcity mindset, that's why it becomes emotional because you don't think there's enough to go around. Not necessarily because not, well, I agree with you. I'm not, yeah. saying I, I'm not saying that I disagree because yeah, no. I don't agree. But what I mean by an emotional component is that it also goes into what, how were you raised? What was your experience, right? Like when I meet so many people that, you know, it's the stories that they're telling them. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. The still limiting telling. beliefs. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I meet people and, it, and it's crazy because it's, it goes to two extremes, right? Say, for example, you know, I sit across client. They say, you know what? My parents, they were terrible with money. You know, they, they, they were never organized. And so they picked up on those habits and they're also super unorganized. And then I meet with people who had super unorganized parents and they never had enough and all of these things. And they're now super organized. So it can go both ways, ways, right? But then that fear is still there because they grew up. It affected them in most. Well, because they witnessed it. They witnessed it. They were, Absolutely. they had front row center tickets to yeah. watching what happens when you don't have, have enough, when you don't have enough and don't you come plan. from uh, a lineage of people who didn't know how to preserve their money. They didn't have financial literacy, which is <laughs> what he talks about in the book, yes. right? Yep. He does dive into that. You know, when you talk about a lottery winner, right? Mm -hmm. They go and they win the lottery. All but if you didn't have the education of how to manage the funds that are coming your way, Bye -bye. Parkinson's law will grab you and any empty space will be spent. And you got to keep up with the Joneses. Yes. You got to do your dream trip because now you have the money for of it. Course. Well, it's the same thing that we see with a lot of uh, a lot of athletes, professional athletes that uh, oh. kind of make it into the big leagues. You see that a lot. So yeah. financial planning for those individuals is very significant. Same thing sometimes with uh, individuals that w move into the medical field or move into fields yeah. that are very high income yeah where and this is why having financial literacy and teaching your children financial literacy no matter what level of you know income or tax bracket you're at is so important because who knows it could be that they win the lottery it could be that they get a scholarship and they become you know neuroscientists or neuroscientists you're a neurosurgeons <laughs> they can be new york and they have chairs <laughs> cheers <laughs> <Try to> get <laughs> those. i like that but or they, but their business doing. explodes, oh, right? Absolutely. Yeah, they so many things. things. And the thing is that sometimes, and I met ways with the uh, business so owners. I, I, I personally have struggled with that too. Mm -hmm. The money is just flowing in, and you go in, and the first thing you do is you're like, oh, I, 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 I need to hire someone. Yeah, mm -hmm. And you hire, and you hire, mm -hmm. and you hire, and you hire, and you're like, oh, I'm at the top of the world. Well, we saw that so much in Pumpkin Plan, right, where the people kind of go too big versus just honing in on what their area of innovation is yeah. and their specialty exactly. but yeah. no, it's true I mean, i've met with business owners that are very successful and they've never had a conversation with a planner or they've never they I, I met someone the other day that you know their business is booing um and they haven't filed taxes in three years so and so those are things wait, that are you know wait, wait, wait. <laughs> thought, what are you thinking you know and because there's ways that you can mitigate the taxes yeah. that are coming in. And he gets into that, right? right? So, yeah, absolutely. We're kind of jumping ahead to uh, chapter four, where it's a lesson in taxes. Mm. And then really how to, it, and then he dips into le chapter five is how to almost invent money and keep one. He says, once you own the dollar, it's yours and you need to put it to work for you. Mm, your money needs to stay oh, yeah. within your legacy. Mm. And he says that this is why the rich are rich and the poor are poor. Like it's almost a flow of assets or income to liabilities versus assets, you know, funding your liabilities. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. this is where I think, you know, Vivi is so passionate around just education. Mm. Absolutely. And anybody who really, truly wants financial wealth, like this is it. This book is like 
it will explode it's, ideas it's in your head those, yeah. like, <laughs> quintessential like but going back to like building blocks we were talking mm-hmm. about it earlier it's mm-hmm. just one of those very first yeah. steps that you have to take i mean for me this book really changed my mindset you know my, uh, can i borrow this absolutely so please. i want to go ahead keep talking so, okay. <laughs> but it did it's it, it's it's a mindset changing book right like there are so many books that are like that and i think i saw uh think and grow rich mm-hmm. and you're mm-hmm. at the story, right mm-hmm. and then you have rich dad for that yep. then you have the richest men in babylon yeah you know, that's one of those yep you know kind of we like, just uh we're going to be doing science of getting rich oh i've never heard of that book oh, oh how oh, okay. yeah cool. yep okay so but there are books that are you know they just it's not only education it's not only entertainment it's not only you know it's just one of those things that change the way she in think. which you're wired especially it's- if you're trapped in the hamster wheel oh yeah absolutely yep. and so mm-hmm. I, i'm building this quadrant because we're talking about the hamster wheel we talked about this in pumpkin plant right so kevin you can focus in on that so one of the main ah. key points of this book <laughs> is this quadrant right over here i'm blocking your face i'm sorry but <laughs> you have employee you're employed right you're employed for a company you're working for a company. And I, I want to reiterate something. I come from a family it's completely white collared. Well, my father at one point in time will decide to watch these videos. And I just want to say, Dad, I'm nothing to do and I'm not downing what you have done. I am completely proud of you. Okay. Oh. I'm really proud of you. And you have created a great legacy for me. Um, and I've decided to take another path outside of what you've done. And I don't discriminate or anything and so anyone who's watching this and you're working a nine to five you're working for a company and you you are happy in your job we are not trying to say don't do what you're doing Mm -hmm. right it defaults back to other previous books that we've read that if you're happy doing what you're doing continue to do it absolutely but if you're not happy doing what you're doing and you want something different and you're exploring the world of entrepreneurship this is where we come in my father is completely happy with what he does. Good. Okay. Yeah. So building on that, mm-hmm. you have an employee. Okay. You're working for somebody else. You are you are devoting your time and you are selling your time to that employee or to that employer. And you are an employee. At one point, and not for everyone, you have decided that you want to work for yourself. Okay. You no longer want to work for that employer. You have decided you want to work for yourself. You have now moved yourself into another quadrant, which is called self-employed. Okay. We have done a episode around the pumpkin plan, around um, E-Myth, which is when someone decides to leave employment and work for themselves as a technician, Mm -hmm. they become self-employed. The only thing that they've done is they've transferred the way they earn their money. Okay. They're still selling their time for money. They just executed it a little bit different. They decided that they have to figure out how to get their own customers. Exactly. They have to figure out how to keep their own books. Yes. (laughs) And so (laughs) what the corporate doesn't do, you have to become self-employed. Yeah. And there's a transition that happens from being self-employed to being a business owner. Okay. A business owner is someone who has learned to delegate who understands the importance of processes, who understands the importance of, of deciding how they want their future. They, they are now creating intentionally instead of working by default, mm-hmm. all right? That is a business owner. Then there is the fourth quadrant. When you decide as a business owner, you will now learn to do exactly what Vivi is talking about. You will grow your wealth, you will retain your wealth or reserve your wealth, and you will transfer your wealth. And that is the investor section. So if I had to sum up this book, he gives you the formula of how to transition from each mm-hmm. one of these quadrants seen Nestle. Yep. And each one of them has their own tips and tricks. Yeah. Right? And none of them are as easy as let me just read this book and I know exactly what to do. No, you will have to put it into practice, but this is the quadrant. These are the quadrants of where you're at. And not everyone wants to be in all four quadrants and that's okay. But if you decide you want to be here, this book will tell you mm-hmm. what you got to do to get here. If you're deciding that this employment is okay for you, because you can, it all depends on clock out, check out, it's all perspective. Home. Yep. It's relative. What is it that you want? Mm-hmm. And that's why I bring up my father, because my father has made a fantastic life doing exactly what he does right now as an employee for a company. And you can, mm-hmm. right? Not 
it, it, not everyone needs to be their own employee nope. or, mm. or their own there was, was entrepreneur. Business owner. Business owner. Entrepreneur. No one, yep. You know what? Because honestly, as a business owner, I need people who are okay with not being business owners so I can run my company functionally. Well, that and yeah, people who don't, because I think that also being a business owner, you are taking on a lot of risk. And you, it is a very, I mean, it's not ever get one. into business ownership thinking that they're going to have a lot of time on their hands. Easy in street. the beginning. <laughs> yeah. It's you know? in for a rude awakening. <laughs> yeah. But you can get to a point as a business owner, not as a you know self-employed, but as a business owner, when you've gotten the right people in place, when you've learned how to delegate, when you've gotten your power team and you know they can kind of trickle down tasks, you can get to that point, mm-hmm. right? That's, I think, the goal of every business owner, right? Or to eventually exit businesses, which is, I mean, the way that you get the wealthiest the most, right? Or the fastest. <laughs> but but there have there are people who are very happy. I mean, my sister, for example, I love her to death, but she is very, very happy being an employee. She Excellent. has no responsibility. Like she has a lot of responsibility. Sorry, sorry, Dad. No, what I'm trying to say is <laughs> she doesn't have to run the risk of being a business owner because it is a risky business, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. and uh, she's just not into it. And I respect that. Is I respect the heck out of that. You know what I mean? And. And we do need people that want to be employed. And Absolutely. We do need people that want to, you know, it's just, it's not for everybody. It's not. So really what, if I were to additionally sum up the book, he right. is very passionate about real estate investing. Oh, like yeah. that. Oh yeah. Thread runs crystal clear through that's this his, book. That's his area of expertise. That is his area of expertise. And he will, he doesn't try to sell you on it by any chance, by any means, but that is how he chose, right? That's his methodology. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it worked for him. But. As a business owner, I also found a lot of great truths that run through no matter what industry you're wanting to develop your wealth in. Right. Right. Yes. And can be applied in any industry. It absolutely can. Yeah. And where I really was like, oh, thank you. And it was kind of a kick in my, you know, allowed me to kick myself in my butt was the tax perspective his chapters mm, on tax absolutely and yes. keeping once you make a dollar it's yours mm. how do you really and it's it's kind of that mindset of why people stay trapped in the hamster wheel and why the rich just keep getting richer and he even breaks down the history of taxation which was fascinating i mean at this point this podcast is a longer episode i'm just saying you got to get it and read it you know and yeah. we're not ones to advise you on what taxes you should do you know you really need to yes so partner with tax professional absolutely yes. you know so i don't even i don't know i don't go there no no oh i don't even want to try to go there and when it comes into wealth management you know that is not the business you and i are trying to run and you need to know so much more mm-hmm. about your clients so let's not even let the rest of this episode go there let's just say that this was i opening for all three of us oh, absolutely when i read it i mean <laughs> it really did a lot of things kind of clicked yeah and i changed my mindset and i you know <laughs> and and my parents are just they don't share this mindset they were very much into the idea of like go to school get an education go get a job and be mm-hmm. grateful for your job and but all of your money is savings and that is literally what they taught all of us and so if you want to become wealthy that is not the mindset that you should have there are ways in which you can make your money work for you in many different ways, right? In many different uh, buckets, as I like to call them, right? Yes. And, and he addresses that in this book, yes, right? And, absolutely. And, and I think that's where you kind of get to learn, like, yeah. okay, having a job, having a salary, and putting all of my money into, like, these, sorry. Yeah. Let me backtrack. But, yeah, yep. having a job, having a salary, and having all those benefits, uh, you know, that my job gives me is not necessarily a way in which... I can get into the lifestyle. To grow. So yeah. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna build a little bit there. Yeah. So I actually have a very close personal friend that they actually they are they retire. They were part of the fire initiative, which was a, a retire early initiative. So he retired. Oh, oh yeah. Age, uh, yep. He 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 retired at the age of 47. Ooh. And he was never an entrepreneur. Okay. He never worked. But he for did himself. the right things early on. So in this quadrant. Right. And then and this is, you know, uh, Robert, great quadrant. But I think something that was amiss in this quadrant was that you can jump around. Right. So you can be an employee and you can actually, depending on how you decide to invest your money. Right. By investing your money, 
And Vivi is a great way. She's she's a great in guidance and inspiring you on how to invest your wealth. You can be an employee, and as if you're investing your your funds and you're managing your funds, you're already a business owner, right? Because the point of a business oh. owner is to attract more wealth and make sure that it's allocated the way you want it, right? You're living by intention and not by default. So he went and he skipped self-employed. He was never self-employed. He went straight from employee to business owner and to investor and he was able to retire at the age of 47 so robert i dare say you might need to re-edit this book because oh. you don't need to do all four quadrants mm, that's gotta hurt cheers <laughs> there you go oh, yes i that's love awesome. that so i love that but overall i have to take my sip yeah yeah it's about that three that days will happen if you don't Oh yeah, That's I took my sip. I took an <laughs> audio. I saw really amazing book, and yeah. it, the underlying tone I heard her say, and I know you and I, it shifted a mindset. And oh, I yeah. think when you want to launch your wealth, when you want to launch your business, we've said this so many times. It starts with your mindset, and that's oh, why yeah. so many of the books that we've chosen. Yeah. Um, and when we help our clients, the first thing we dig into truly is mindset. So. Robert, it, yeah. it is really a great book. And, it, and if you're wanting to get into real estate investing, this should be your Bible, to be honest. Oh, my God. That is, yes. and that's, that's actually the reason why I either read the book, because I thought about getting into real estate. Because, I mean, it's it's a fantastic industry. Sure, right? And, sure. And going back to like the Buckets conversation, you want to have diverse, diversity. And he talks about diversity yes. right here in the yep, book as well. Absolutely. Uh, but that's the reason why I read the book because I was like, you know, I saw so many people that created wealth through real estate. Now, that's not the only bucket. That's not the only way. But it's definitely one of the most significant ways, and especially here in Central Florida. No, in Central Florida. Florida. Oh, right? Right? Yes. But, but, you but know, and it's a big deal. You know what? He talks about staying in your lane. Mm. And he talks about the um, sermon, not sermon, uh, speaking engagement that Ray Kroc, founder of McDonald, not mm. found, but... Yes, yeah, uh, yeah and Karine was um, giving, and he asked everybody, "What business am I in?" Yeah, and everyone's yeah, like, burgers. "Burgers, right?" And he's right. like, "Nope, real I'm estate. in the real estate real business. business." Yep, yep. And that was I because I, you know, Ethan is really passionate about real estate and investing, and he's talked to a couple friends of mine who are realtors, and he's jumping on what he needs to do, even though he's 17, he does want to tread this path I, love that. I do too great amazing <laughs> the pocket that is a lot I just never was like okay I mean I do want to own multiple homes I'm going to have a home in New Orleans I'm going to have a home in Savannah we already have our home really mm-hmm. no look at that I don't want to crash it's <laughs> gonna happen <laughs> we're speaking it into existence I love it but I never thought about my business in being like real estate mm-hmm. but when you look at Ray Kroc's mindset and then he even said, you know, Robert even talked about one of his friends being, you know, he has car washes everywhere, but his friend is really in the real estate business. So I'm like, oh, how do we think about opportunities? So I'm so, always the outlier here. Well, I actually think that everyone I want that was the real estate business. This is true. Now I that I, agree. yes. Well, because if you think about it, you're always looking for the dominant share of your industry, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for the, do- well, let's talk about the Bitcoin boys, right? Mm-hmm. Bitcoin's huge. Whoever was the first pioneers in Bitcoin, that has actually, they dominated the Bitcoin real estate, right? If you're mm-hmm. looking to talk about Home Depot. Home Depot went ahead and dominated everything that has real estate and home improvement. So whatever industry you're in, you are actually dominating the real estate of that industry. Real estate does not mean the literal. A literal. Because now we have different oh, real estate. Exactly. And financial real so estate. So look at it, real estate as the industry that it's you're in. Nation real estate. So if you are dominating oh. your industry, then you are already dominating that real estate. So the book applies no matter what you're in. Yeah. This is why I appreciate you so much. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, my gosh. Yep. <laughs> Cheers, y'all. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we can close. Friends, thank you for joining us for this <laughs> fluid podcast. <laughs> fluid. Oh, and I hear it. I hear it. Phoebe, thank you for being oh part God, of this really. with us. This thank was so you, much fun. Thank you, ladies, <laughs> for inviting me to be a part of this. This has been such a oh. wonderful discussion. Yes. It is so <laughs> amazing to know people that read books, like books, and are just 
interesting. Like just I, I'm open to discussion and conversation and debate and we could go back and forth and it's so much fun. This yes. is a way that you learn and you grow and you challenge yourself and you connect with amazing people. So thank you for having ah, me. This thank such you. a wonderful opportunity. What I'm really hoping is that we're capturing the spirit of you ever gone to a networking event yes. you're going with someone you're talking with them and then you come across someone who's just like their thinking is a little out there and yeah. you're just like person Ooh. intrigued me you know right. never tell me more that's what i want to I capture want here to it's like that more. those conversations when you're at a networking event you're just like man that person caught my attention that's the spirit of what i was thinking about like yep no one talks about it but when you're going to these networking events they're giving you free booze yep right <laughs> Why are they gonna take you? Yeah. Why are they gonna make you the free place? Yes. Yeah. Oh what a great. Or, yes. Right here, here, here. Uh oh. No. Yeah. With that, so, y'all. Yeah. Thank you for joining us this week, y'all. I do want, if you don't mind, yes. yeah. Evie, can you please give us a little info about where people can reach you? Because yes. you are a fantastic resource. resource. So, oh, oh, thank you. Absolutely. So I am on LinkedIn, of course, as everybody is. <laughs> so you can look me up as Viviana Solano. That's my first and last name. And we'll find that down below, too. Okay. Yeah, we'll okay. put it down below. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So, yeah. So it's like Vivian with an A at the end. Just don't forget the A, please. If you don't mind. <laughs> don't be very grateful. Um, but yeah, Viviana Solano, LinkedIn. And if not, you can look me up. Look me up on instagram my handle is viviana.solano.nm uh and that is where we can connect okay great so friends thank you help us grow this tribe a little bit of likes a little bit of subscribes and a lot of shares a lot of shares <laughs> and if you've reached this point in the video please 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 let's get back to what youtube is supposed to be for not only are we sharing you information we're sharing our thoughts it's supposed to be a platform where you can also share your ideas with us and what Talk grabs your attention with this video. Tell us. That helps us. Yeah. And guys, the byproduct of business is helping. I want to know how, how I helped you. Yep. And what do you want to hear next? Yes. All right. Love that. So, um, friends, grab a good book. Get some great booze. And grab an amazing buddy to share it with. Cheers, y'all. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Mm -hmm.